Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. When you were born again in Christ Jesus, you've got everything in you that you need, and the rest of the Christian life is learning how to rest in what Jesus has already done. We already have these things, and it was just really about resting in the finished works of Jesus. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of The Gospel Truth. Today, I'm continuing to teach through a series that I've entitled, You've Already Got It. I tell you what, this is a powerful teaching. I've really enjoyed this. It helps me to go back over and refresh all these things. Actually, this is a continuation of a teaching that I did a month ago that I've entitled Spirit, Soul, and Body. It's talking about your true identity in Christ or in the Spirit. And that's the truth that just unlocked the Word of God to me. And one of the revelations that understanding it was my spirit that got born again, it's in my spirit that I have everything. One of the benefits or one of the revelations that came out of that is this teaching about you've already got it. When I understood that I am complete in my spirit, that my spirit is as perfect as it's ever going to get, well, then that changed my paradigm. Instead of asking God to bless me, I believed I was already blessed, Ephesians 1, 3. Instead of asking God to heal me, I believed that I was already healed. By His stripes I was healed, 1 Peter 2, 24. And the verses that we used in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19, the same His exceeding greatness of His power towards me, the same power that raised Christ from the dead. When I realized that I already had all of this stuff, it changed the way I related to God. Instead of begging Him to give me something, I started acknowledging what He had already given me and started living out of that. And I could go on making applications of this forever. Just about everything that the Lord has shown me somehow or another traces back to my identity in Christ and the fact that everything I will ever need, ever need in the future has already been given unto me in my spirit. And it's a matter of drawing it out instead of going and and getting God to give me something new. I tell you, that has just radically changed my life. And that's what we've been talking about. The last couple of days, I've been focusing on Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, where it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. And verse 9 says, Not of works, lest any man should boast. And I've been showing that grace is something that God does independent of us. It was done 2,000 years ago through Jesus. Grace and truth came by Jesus. John chapter 1 says, And so it was done independent of us 2,000 years ago. The supply was made before the need ever existed. And faith isn't something we do to get God to move, but rather it's resting in what God has already done. And it takes effort to rest. You know, what I want to do today is to use these verses in Hebrews chapter 4. And these verses used to make no sense to me whatsoever. I struggled with this for a long time. Because if you look down here, like in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 11, let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. Man, how do you labor to rest? You know, when you get tired and you want to go to sleep or something, you don't labor to rest. You just lay down and just fall asleep. It seems like it's effortless. But this is talking about let's labor to rest. And because of my wrong concept of what this was talking about, for a long time this was hidden from me. But now the things that I've been sharing with you about how everything is done in Christ, and now what we are doing is learning how to rest, just rely upon what He did and us not get into self-effort and try and make it come to pass on our own. Now that I've understand, understood those things, it has opened this whole thing up to me. So let's look at this here in Hebrews chapter 4. The context of this, if you were reading in chapter 3, it was using the Israelites coming out of the land of Egypt and saying that it was because of their unbelief that they didn't enter into the promised land. The generation that actually came out of the land of Egypt, they got into doubt 
AND UNBELIEF AND TEMPTED GOD IN THE WILDERNESS, AND BECAUSE OF IT, THEY NEVER ENTERED INTO THE PROMISED LAND. THEIR CHILDREN ARE THE ONES THAT ENTERED IN. AND SO THAT'S THE CONTEXT, AND THAT'S WHAT HE WAS TALKING ABOUT. IN CHAPTER 4, HEBREWS CHAPTER 4, VERSE 1, IT SAYS, LET US THEREFORE FEAR, LEST A PROMISE BEING LEFT US OF ENTERING INTO HIS REST, ANY OF YOU SHOULD SEEM TO COME SHORT OF IT. FOR UNTO US WAS THE GOSPEL PREACHED AS WELL AS UNTO THEM, BUT THE WORD PREACHED DID NOT PROFIT THEM, NOT BEING MIXED WITH FAITH IN THEM THAT HEARD IT. THAT IS A RADICAL STATEMENT RIGHT THERE. YOU KNOW, THERE'S A LOT OF PEOPLE THAT SAY, WELL, THE WORD OF GOD PROMISES, AND THEY they SAY, I'M STANDING ON THESE PROMISES, BUT THEN IF THEY DON'T SEE SOMETHING COME TO PASS, THEY IMMEDIATELY GO TO SAYING, WELL, GOD'S WORD SAID, AND IT DIDN'T COME TO PASS. BUT THIS SHOWS YOU THAT YOU HAVE TO MIX THE WORD WITH FAITH. IT'S LIKE FAITH IS THE SECRET SAUCE. IT'S THE INGREDIENT THAT MAKES EVERYTHING ELSE WORK. JUST BECAUSE YOU HAVE A BIBLE AND CARRY IT UNDER YOUR ARM, OR EVEN IF YOU CAN QUOTE THE SCRIPTURES, BUT IF IT'S NOT IN FAITH, THEN THE WORD OF GOD DOESN'T RELEASE ITS POWER. IT HAS TO BE MIXED WITH FAITH IN ORDER FOR YOU TO RECEIVE IT. SO THE CHILDREN OF ISRAEL CAME OUT OF THE LAND OF EGYPT, BUT THEY WEREN'T IN FAITH. THEY WERE IN UNBELIEF. AND THEY REBELLED AGAINST GOD TEN TIMES IS WHAT HE SAID IN uh, NUMBERS CHAPTER 14 WHEN HE WAS SAYING THAT THEY WOULD DWELL IN THE WILDERNESS FOR 40 YEARS AND DIE IN THE WILDERNESS BECAUSE THAT'S WHAT THEY SAID. WOULD TO GOD WE HAD DIED IN THIS WILDERNESS? SO HE SAYS, ALL RIGHT, I'M GOING TO DO WHAT YOU SAID BECAUSE YOU'VE TEMPTED ME NOW THESE 10 TIMES. HE SAID HIMSELF THAT THERE WERE 10 TIMES THAT THEY HAD SPOKEN AGAINST HIM WHEN THEY DOUBTED THAT HE COULD PROVIDE THEM WATER AND MOSES HAD TO HIT THE ROCK AND WATER CAME OUT OF THE ROCK AND THEN they, THE WATER WAS BITTER ONE TIME AND MOSES HAD TO PUT A TREE INTO THE WATER AND HEAL THE WATERS AND THEN THEY COMPLAINED ABOUT NOT HAVING ANY uh, FOOD TO EAT AND GOD SENT THEM MANNA AND THEN THEY GOT TIRED OF THE MANNA AND COMPLAINED THAT THEY WANTED FLESH TO EAT AND GOD DID THAT AND ANYWAY, THERE WAS 10 TIMES THAT THEY REBELLED AT GOD AND SO THEY WERE NOT IN FAITH. THEY WERE IN UNBELIEF. AND YET GOD HAD DONE THESE GREAT THINGS FOR THEM. DID YOU KNOW THERE'S A DIRECT PARALLEL BETWEEN THAT AND US? AND SOME OF YOU, YOU MAY THINK, WELL, I DIDN'T COME OUT OF EGYPT. WE CAME OUT OF SOMETHING EVEN WORSE THAN THAT. WORSE THAN PHYSICAL BONDAGE AND SLAVERY IS BEING THE SLAVE TO SIN. YOU KNOW, IT SAYS, EPHESIANS CHAPTER 2, VERSE 3, WE WERE BY NATURE THE CHILDREN OF WRATH, EVEN AS OTHERS, SO WE WERE BY NATURE A CHILD OF THE DEVIL, BUT THERE'S ALSO OTHER SCRIPTURES THAT TALK ABOUT WHOEVER COMMITS SIN IS THE SERVANT OF SIN. ALL OF US WERE SERVANTS TO SIN. ALL OF US WERE SLAVES. AND JESUS HAS REDEEMED US FROM THAT SLAVERY, AND HE HAS BROUGHT US OUT OF A LIFE OF DEFEAT AND NEGATIVISM, at MUCH MORE SO THAN WHAT THE ISRAELITES WERE DELIVERED FROM. PHYSICAL BONDAGE IS NOTHING COMPARED TO EMOTIONAL, SPIRITUAL BONDAGE. AND THE TRUTH IS, IF YOU'VE BEEN BORN AGAIN, YOU HAVE BEEN DELIVERED. YOU HAVE BEEN RAISED FROM THE DEAD. YOU HAVE BEEN BROUGHT OUT OF YOUR SLAVERY. BUT JUST LIKE THESE PEOPLE, EVEN THOUGH THEY EXPERIENCED THAT PHYSICAL DELIVERANCE, THEY DIDN'T BELIEVE GOD. THEY DIDN'T MIX THE WORD WITH FAITH, AND BECAUSE OF IT, THEY DIED AND NEVER EXPERIENCED WHAT GOD REALLY INTENDED THEM TO HAVE. LIKEWISE, THERE'S PEOPLE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM THAT YOU'VE INVITED THE LORD INTO YOUR HEART. YOU REALLY HAVE MADE JESUS YOUR SAVIOR. IF YOU WERE TO DIE, YOU WOULD GO TO HEAVEN, BUT YOU ARE NOT EXPERIENCING THE FREEDOM AND THE LIBERTY THAT JESUS PURCHASED FOR YOU BECAUSE YOU AREN'T MIXING THE WORD WITH FAITH. YOU'RE JUST IN TOTAL UNBELIEF. YOU ARE LETTING CIRCUMSTANCES AND PEOPLE AND THINGS DOMINATE YOU INSTEAD OF THE WORD OF GOD. I'M NOT SAYING THAT TO HURT YOU. I'M GLAD THAT YOU'RE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM. PRAISE GOD. I BELIEVE THAT GOD HAD YOU TUNE IN SO THAT YOU COULD HEAR SOME THINGS TODAY THAT WOULD HELP YOU. I'M NOT SAYING THIS TO HURT YOU, BUT I AM SAYING IT TO ENLIGHTEN YOU AND RECOGNIZE THAT you, YOU DON'T HAVE ANY JUSTIFICATION TO SAY THAT THE WORD DOESN'T WORK. THE WORD WORKS PERFECTLY, BUT YOU HAVE TO MIX IT WITH FAITH. AND THIS SAYS, THE WORD PREACHED UNTO THEM DID NOT PROFIT THEM, NOT BEING MIXED WITH FAITH IN THEM THAT HEARD IT. AND THEN IN VERSE 3, IT SAYS, FOR WE WHICH HAVE BELIEVED DO ENTER INTO REST AS HE SAID. AND THIS IS A QUOTATION FROM GENESIS CHAPTER uh, 2. 
as I, excuse me, this is from the uh, psalmist. This is from David referring back to Genesis chapter 2, which after God created the heavens and the earth, he said he rested on the seventh day. This is Genesis chapter 2. And then David referred back to this, and this is quoting David as saying, As I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. This is talking about that God spent six days creating the earth, and then he rested from all of his labors. In verse 4, For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. This is talking about the seventh day of creation, and God did rest the seventh day from all of his works. So that's in Genesis chapter 2. After he had created the heavens and the earth, it said he rested, and then hundreds of years later, actually thousands of years later, the uh, prophet David, King David, came along, and in verse 5 it says, He said, In this place again, they shall enter into my rest. So it says God rested on the Sabbath day, but then thousands of years later, here's David still talking about a rest that people didn't enter into the rest of the Lord. And the rest of this, I'm just going to summarize it, because in the King James, this is really awkward. It's old English terminology, but here's basically what he's saying, that God spoke of taking a rest on the seventh day of creation. And then thousands of years later, David came along and talked about that these people did not enter into the rest of the Lord. And he was quoting from, from Genesis chapter 2. So that shows you that this rest was not just something that happened one time where God rested on the seventh day, but there was a rest that he intended for us to have. And this is what these verses are saying. And when Joshua led the children of Israel into the Promised Land, that wasn't the complete fulfillment of entering into his rest because hundreds of years after Joshua, here's King David saying, if they shall enter into my rest. So he says all of these things, and he says in verse 9, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. And so this rest, man, for a long time, I struggled with this, thinking, what does this mean to rest? Because my concept of rest was like when you're tired, you just go lay down and you do nothing. And yet this says in verse 11, let us labor to enter into the rest. This isn't talking about a rest where you do nothing and you're just totally inactive. And because I didn't understand what this rest was, uh, I struggled for a long time. What is this talking about? And so here's basically what the Lord showed me. When the Lord said that He rested on the seventh day from His creation, that wasn't because He was tired. I mean, just think, He had created the entire universe. He had created millions, billions of stars, planets. He would created all of the animals here, the people. He created all the vegetation and on and on. And I mean, he's bound to have been worn out, and so he had to rest on the seventh day. No, the Scripture says in Isaiah, I believe it's chapter 40, that I'm the Lord. I don't get tired. I don't grow weary. God doesn't have to sleep. He doesn't have to go rest. God wasn't tired. It wasn't like he said, if I create one more star, I, th I may pass out. No, God doesn't get weary. He wasn't tired. He didn't rest in the sense that he had to refresh himself. When this is talking about rest, it's talking about that he ceased from his labor. He was complete. It was through. It's like when an artist paints a picture and he has put everything in it that he's got, and if he adds one more brush stroke to that thing, he's going to turn a masterpiece into a failure because it's complete. He can't add anything to it. It's perfect, and so he rests from his painting, not because he's worn out and because that paintbrush is so heavy. No, it's not that he's resting because he's tired. He's resting because it's complete. You can say the same thing about a lawyer, that a lawyer, you know, will present his case, and then he'll say, the defense rest or the prosecution rest. What they're saying is that I'm through. It's complete. I've said everything that I've got to say. There's nothing else that I can say. So this is what the Lord did when he rested on the seventh day. It wasn't because he was tired. It's because it was complete. And if you remember back last week, I was using this example from Genesis chapter 1. And in Genesis 1, he created 
the heavens and the earth. He created the earth. He drew all of the land into one place. Then He created all of the vegetation on the earth. And then He created all of the animals on the land and all of the animals in the sea. And then He created man. And He did all of these things. And then He rested, not because He was tired, but because it was complete. And back last week, I was making this point that He didn't just create man, create animals, and then man gets hungry and he says, Oh, I forgot about food, so let me create food for it. No, that's not what he did. He had anticipated that we would need to eat, and so he created all of the food for us and for all of the animals in the sea, all of the animals on the land, all of the animals in the air. He anticipated this, and he already created it. And did you know when he created all of the vegetation on the earth, this is really significant. If you turn over to Genesis chapter 1, let me just read a little bit of this to you. It says that um, God said in verse 11, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. Now, that's wordy, and sometimes we just think, well, you know the Bible. They just said things strange, and we think that it's just strange, and we we don't think there's a purpose to it. Why didn't he say, just let there be trees, let there be grass, let there be herbs? Because if he would have just created the original creation, then any time one of those trees died, he would have had to create, create new trees, new grass, new herbs, new fruit. But the way he stated it is very significant. Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. What this means is that God made creation. Not only did he create the original trees and plants and grass and everything, but he made it so that it could procreate. He put within every plant, every tree, every fruit, SEED SO THAT IT COULD PROCREATE. AND HE DID THE SAME THING WITH ANIMALS. HE TOLD THE ANIMALS TO BE FRUITFUL AND MULTIPLIED, AND ANIMALS SOW SEED. HE DID THE SAME THING TO PEOPLE. HE TOLD US TO BE FRUITFUL AND MULTIPLY AND REPLENISH THE EARTH. DID YOU KNOW THAT SINCE THE ORIGINAL CREATION, GOD HAS NEVER CREATED ANOTHER TREE, ANOTHER PLANT, ANOTHER ANIMAL, ANOTHER BIRD, ANOTHER FISH, OR ANOTHER PERSON. NOW, WE WERE ALL CREATED IN HIS IMAGE, BUT IT IS THROUGH ADAM AND EVE AND THEN THEIR DESCENDANTS AND THEY'VE SOWN SEED. WE AREN'T A UNIQUE CREATION IN THE SENSE THAT ADAM WAS. WE ARE AN EXTENSION OF ADAM. WE HAVE BEEN PROCREATED THROUGH ADAM. And, AND THE REASON THAT THIS IS SIGNIFICANT IS TO SAY THAT WHEN GOD CREATED EVERYTHING, HE THOUGHT THROUGH CREATION SO COMPLETELY THAT I'M JUST AMAZED. YOU KNOW, THE MORE I LEARN ABOUT CREATION, I'M AMAZED AT THE THOUGHT, THE EFFORT THAT GOD PUT INTO IT. YOU KNOW, WE BREATHE OXYGEN. WE BREATHE THE AIR. WE EXHALE CARBON DIOXIDE. AND IF GOD HADN'T HAVE MADE IT SO THAT THE ATMOSPHERE COULD BE PURIFIED, WE WOULD EVENTUALLY DIE OF CARBON MONOXIDE POISONING. BUT HE'S CREATED IT SO THAT THE TREES AND THE GRASS AND THINGS, THEY TAKE THIS CARBON DIOXIDE AND THEY USE IT AND THEN THEY PUT OUT OXYGEN. GOD THOUGHT THROUGH ALL OF THIS SO THAT NOW HE DOESN'T HAVE TO SAY, WELL, MAN, I DIDN'T KNOW THAT THERE WAS GOING TO BE THIS MANY PEOPLE ON THE EARTH AND NOW I'VE GOT TO ADJUST AND I'VE GOT TO DO SOMETHING NEW. NO, WHEN HE RESTED, HE HAD ANTICIPATED EVERYTHING THAT COULD EVER HAPPEN ON THIS EARTH, AND HE RESTED. HE HAS NEVER DONE ANYTHING ELSE. HE DOESN'T HAVE TO GET UP IN THE MORNING AND SAY, LET THERE BE A MILLION NEW CATTLE TO REPLACE ALL THE ONES THAT WERE KILLED AND EATEN. LET THERE BE A MILLION NEW BIRDS WHO DIED, YOU KNOW, RAN INTO A CAR OR SOMETHING, OR ALL OF THE INSECT. HE DOESN'T CREATE ANYTHING. HE CREATED THE ORIGINAL AND HE SET INTO MOTION THE PROCREATION SO THAT the, THE CREATION CONTINUES ON. AND WHEN IT SAYS HE RESTED, 
NOT BECAUSE HE WAS TIRED, BUT BECAUSE IT WAS COMPLETE AND HE HAS NEVER CREATED ANOTHER ANIMAL, ANOTHER BIRD, ANOTHER PERSON. HE DOESN'T HAVE TO CREATE NEW ANIMALS TO REPLACE THE ONES WHO DIED, NEW TREES TO uh, REPLACE THE ONES THAT WERE BURNED OR THAT DIED. HE'S BUILT CREATION SO THAT IT JUST CAN MAINTAIN ITSELF. AND WITHOUT ME GOING INTO A LOT OF DETAILS, THIS IS ONE OF THE REASONS THAT I DON'T BUY IN TO ALL OF THE ENVIRONMENTAL STUFF AND PEOPLE SAYING THAT IN 10 YEARS THE EARTH IS UNINHABITABLE. I JUST READ SOMETHING THIS LAST WEEK ABOUT ALL OF THE PREDICTIONS THAT WERE MADE IN THE 1950s AND 60s, AND THEY SAID THAT BY 1970-SOMETHING, THE POPULATION OF THE WORLD, THERE WOULD BE EXTREME FAMINE BECAUSE WE CANNOT SUSTAIN, I THINK IT WAS FIVE OR SIX BILLION PEOPLE ON THIS PLANET. OF COURSE, NOW WE KNOW IN hindsight THAT WE'VE GOT OVER SEVEN BILLION PEOPLE ON THE PLANET, AND THE UNITED STATES ALONE COULD SUPPLY ENOUGH FOOD FOR THE ENTIRE WORLD IF WE WERE TO REMOVE ALL RESTRAINTS AND JUST, uh, YOU KNOW, USE IT TO THE MAX. ALL OF THESE PREDICTIONS HAVE BEEN WRONG. ALL OF THE PREDICTIONS ABOUT THE EARTH COMING TO AN END AND ABOUT US DESTROYING THIS FRAGILE PLANET, it's, IT'S PEOPLE THAT DON'T UNDERSTAND THAT GOD ANTICIPATED EVERYTHING THAT THE HUMAN RACE WOULD EVER DO, AND HE BUILT a, AN ABILITY TO REPAIR ITSELF, TO PURGE ITSELF INTO THIS PLANET. AND I'M NOT SAYING THAT WE SHOULD TRASH THIS PLANET. YOU KNOW, I GET UPSET WITH PEOPLE THAT DRIVE BY AND THROW THEIR EMPTY BOTTLES AND TRASH OUT ON MY PROPERTY. YOU SHOULDN'T DO STUFF LIKE THAT. I BELIEVE IN TAKING CARE OF THINGS, BUT I DO NOT BELIEVE THAT THE EARTH IS FRAGILE AND THE EARTH, ha THE CLIMATE HAS CYCLES AND STUFF LIKE THIS. IT REGULATES ITSELF. ALL OF THEIR PREDICTIONS ABOUT ALL OF THE THINGS THAT WOULD HAPPEN, THE ICE AGE, WHEN I WAS A KID IN SCHOOL, WE WERE GOING TO ENTER INTO AN ICE AGE, AND NOW IT'S GOING TO BE GLOBAL WARMING AND ALL OF THESE. IT'S JUST WRONG. AND IT DOESN'T TAKE INTO ACCOUNT THAT GOD RESTED ANTICIPATED EVERYTHING THAT WOULD HAPPEN AND BUILT INTO HIS CREATION THE ABILITY TO ADAPT AND TO OVERCOME THESE THINGS. THE SCRIPTURE TELLS US HOW THIS WORLD IS GOING TO END, AND IT'S NOT GOING TO END THROUGH ENVIRONMENTAL POLLUTION AND THINGS LIKE THIS. GOD IS GOING TO DESTROY THIS EARTH WHEN IT COMES HIS TIME AND WHEN HE COMES BACK A SECOND TIME. AND SO ANYWAY, MY POINT IS, HE RESTED NOT BECAUSE HE WAS TIRED, BUT BECAUSE HE HAD THOUGHT THROUGH EVERY DETAIL IN SUCH INTRICATE uh, FASHION THAT THERE WAS JUST NOTHING LEFT FOR HIM TO DO. HE DOESN'T HAVE TO DO ANYTHING. AND THAT HAS A DIRECT APPLICATION TO US. I HAVEN'T GOT TIME TO GO INTO THIS FULLY, BUT LET ME JUST GIVE YOU A TEASE OF WHAT I'LL BE SHARING TOMORROW. OUR NEW CREATION, 2 CORINTHIANS 5, 17, IF ANY MAN BE IN CHRIST, HE'S A NEW CREATURE. AND IN THIS NEW CREATION, IN OUR SPIRIT, GOD HAS GIVEN US EVERYTHING THAT WE WILL EVER NEED. JUST AS IN CREATION, NOTHING SNEAKS UP ON HIM. THERE IS NO PROBLEM, NO ENVIRONMENTAL PROBLEM OR ANY OTHER TYPE OF PROBLEM THAT IS GOING TO CHALLENGE HIS PLANS FOR THIS PLANET. LIKEWISE, THERE'S NOTHING THAT YOU CAN EVER ENCOUNTER THAT WILL EVER STUMP GOD, THAT HE HASN'T GIVEN YOU POWER TO OVERCOME. WHEN HE CREATED YOU, WHEN YOU WERE BORN AGAIN IN CHRIST JESUS, YOU'VE GOT EVERYTHING IN YOU THAT YOU NEED, AND THE REST OF THE CHRISTIAN LIFE IS LEARNING HOW TO REST IN WHAT JESUS HAS ALREADY DONE. YOU'VE ALREADY GOT IT. YOU NEED TO QUIT FIGHTING AND JUST REST. I'VE GOT MORE TO SHARE ON THIS TOMORROW, SO I ENCOURAGE YOU TO LISTEN IN. BUT ALSO, PLEASE GET THIS BOOK. I TELL YOU, THIS IS A GREAT TEACHING. I HAVE IT IN SPANISH ALSO, AND THEN I HAVE A STUDY GUIDE THAT IS THE SAME MATERIAL REFORMATTED SO THAT YOU CAN TEACH OTHERS, AND I HAVE THAT IN SPANISH ALSO. AND THEN WE HAVE CD'S AND DVD'S. LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER AS HE GIVES YOU THIS INFORMATION, AND PLEASE CALL OR WRITE TODAY.